It's another start of the season, which means another recap episode, which we're gonna skim through. You don't want to miss things like the pool party. Come to think of it, there are a few of the top ten heroes we don't know yet, right? My name Still is a lot of potential there. Midoriya, and I've always dreamed of being a hero. And I accomplished that dream in about a semester and a half, approximately. Look at Bakugo smiling. My hero, Academia. Academia, that always throws me off. Nice, new opening. Hell yeah, season four hype. Hand outstretched, staple, staple of anime openings. I see he learned how to strip from Mirio. Looking very determined. Minota looking confident. I hope that's a sign of things to come. My computer froze. Bakugo smiling a lot. The big three among others. A lot of interesting faces there. I'm so pumped for Mirio this season too. It's gonna be great. Yeah, there's just so many elements. Deku needs to save Unicorn Girl. <laughs> great analysis, I know. A plus top tier stuff. Nice. Pretty good. Solid overall. Still weak though. That's because and here we go with the recap. Is there going to be anything original here? Or can we just skip through it? Smash! Let me not skip through that though. <laughs> I have to watch that again. Alright, so I watched the episode, but there wasn't a whole lot besides recap. There was the interesting reporter quirk of having a lot of camera lenses and a nice conversation with him and Deku about how much it means to them and how much it left a spark in their lives to see All Might in action and the general feeling that there's definitely this huge vacuum that's formed in the, the wake of All Might's retirement and power loss. And it ends with the reporter figuring out that Deku is the successor, which, you know, serves as exposition for the audience, especially new newcomers to the show. But there was a weird, like, knowing look from, from Aizawa. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, right here. I mean, it could just be this, his suspicion. Like, he's very suspicious of reporters, and he was distrustful of this guy coming into the dorms, but I kind of wonder how much Aizawa knows either way. He's got to be onto it on, on some level. He's a very sharp guy. He knows the students really well. He knows All Might really well. He also is a fan, you know, a super fan of heroes in his subtle way. And then another development is All Might's cold, which is really worrisome. It's not inconceivable to think he has health problems that he wouldn't necessarily reveal, right? All right, so that's it for the, the recap episode. Let's go on to the first actual episode of season four. The next big thing I'm aiming for is to participate in a hero work-study program. Yeah, this is gonna be a huge semester. Like, so much is gonna happen, them being licensed. You know that All Might can introduce you to a bunch of new people, right, kid? First one who comes to mind is his former sidekick. His name's Right, Nine. that's something that came out of the, the first episode. That guy we saw is All Might's sidekick, the guy who was tracking twice. And it seems like there's maybe a rift that formed between him and All Might, because they mentioned they're no longer speaking. I wonder what happened there. <laughs> The air's practically made of dust here. It's gonna make right. Me the introduction sick. of Beak Villain. Join the club. The guys inside have been so sick the for a while. Crew. What is the deal with the illness? He's what you'd call Yakuza. Okay. He's got the Yakuza text. We're all criminals here, so how is this guy different? Uh, right. Allow me to tell you a story. It's his quirk, and they need it for something. When All Might took the stage, their era was over. The Yakuza survivors who weren't caught became renta thugs for villain groups. In other words, they were the lowest form. How far they've fallen, yeah. I'm more interested in all for one's absence. Oh. The symbol of peace retired. Right, after one those last amazing the victory. And those in the light are both leaderless. So. That's an interesting will point. step up to take their places? Huh. That's his Yakuza training speaking. But that's not wrong, right? I feel like as the viewer, we're expecting Shigaraki to be the one. But you can imagine a lot of different villains having that aspiration of being sort of the one in command or being the one to amass the, the greatest amount of power. In fact, I think Twice's monologue a few episodes ago was alluding to that fact where in the villain group as a whole, there are going to be some with principles and, you know, very connected reasons for what they're doing. And then there are just going to be those who are out for blood and just are hateful and are following their, you know, most base impulses. And so while we're focusing so heavily on the hero versus villain struggle, there's going to be villain on villain struggle as well, you would imagine, un until there's like actually this kind of force that gives some kind of direction. I mean, Stain was definitely that force, but then as Twice points out, once the villains become emboldened, it sort of just allows for anyone to do whatever they want. So there's a lot of different directions this could go. It feels like this guy is actually maybe a possible competitor for Shigaraki. A little bit interesting to see how he reacts to this. You know who my master is, but you've still yeah. got the nerve to ask that. Getting a little riled up. I'm the next leader. He does seem the best equipped out of everyone we know. You have an actual plan? Watch yes. your tongue. A goal without a plan is just a wish. If that's what you're offering, why should I join you? He's testing him. It's not that he's against them. You need direction to achieve your goals. And I have a plan. Put yourself under me. 
Make me your new leader, Under him is not going to show happen. you exactly how to use the right tools. But there probably is something important to what he's saying. Sorry about your small fry. And this is the test of his his quirk. We're free to decide for ourselves exactly where we belong. What is it? What is it? Oh my oh my god. That is no joke. I was not expecting that at all. It's like Shigaraki's quirk, but like more explosive. Shield. Yeah, they have similar quirks. Bastard, I'll eviscerate you. Tomura, let me cut him real quick. No, no, no. See, this is new Shigaraki. New Shigaraki, who's a thinker and is not impulsive. I don't want to rush you, but I like the, the design of this whole crew. Talk, the better. Think things over carefully. Consider how your organization should be run. Come on, Tomura. Another time. See, he does have a vision. If he didn't have a vision, he wouldn't be able to think long-term like this. You need direction to achieve your goals. Right, and right. I have a plan. You'll pay for what you've done today. A lot of villain focus to start things off. Really dark start to season four. Although that's pretty much in line with what you might expect, right? The way it, it's been built. I feel like this is a running theme for Shigaraki where people keep sort of taunting him with this, with his lack of this, with his lack of focus and direction. And that's no coincidence, right? That's a big part of his direction. Even Deku helped him along towards that goal. And it definitely seems like now he has something a lot more like a direction. But I feel like when Beak Villain said that, there's something maybe still missing for Shigaraki, which is why that hit too close to home. You know, there's an insecurity there about who he is and what he's doing. And if one, he's capable of pulling it off because he's sort of young and immature still in a way or at root. And two, if he can measure up to, I guess, his predecessor, but also, I guess, in some way, other heroes even in terms of the magnitude of who they are and in terms of what they're capable of doing. I'm not exactly sure how he's going to proceed, but I could see him actually becoming subservient to this guy just as a tool. That would, in a way, prove that he is capable of this sort of long-term thinking and this big vision type stuff that he's been lacking, which is, like, the, the chip he has on his shoulder. Although it would also be satisfying if he just finds a way to overcome this guy and also accomplish the things he wants to accomplish. We got, like, a, a weird gang arc happening here, like a villain confrontation arc, which is kind of exciting and unexpected. I'm also really curious what Bika's plan is and what he's about. It's always gratifying when villains have something that they're connected to and when there's an element of truth to it. Oh, thank God. <laughs> study a more serious version of your Back to the kids. That was pretty heavy, that intro. Your teachers and the principal discussed them at the faculty meeting, and we all agree. It's too soon. They should really oh, be canceled. Oh, no. What? But? 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 No, no, no. Fake out. This is Aizawa doing push and pull. Some people think we won't be able to raise strong heroes with that sort of protective outlook. Right. And with that in mind... The compromise is to be selective about participating agencies. I see. You know that All Might can introduce you to a bunch of new people, right? Where is Decker going to land? Comes to mind, is is it going to be the sidekick? Kick? Yeah, yeah. You want me to introduce you to Sir Night Eye for the work study program? Sir Night Eye. You wanted to be proactive, so you called Gran Torino, didn't you? Right. What is this guy's deal? Yes, sir. Well, I refuse. Right, there's history. I opposed work studies in a faculty meeting yesterday. You need to work on your shoot style. I just don't want to have yeah, this is what I was waiting for. Guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feelings getting in the way. Why do I feel like he saved that for 30, even though that's number one? I've got more work to do than anyone. Is he that impatient to succeed me? Look, I appreciate your passion, but I can't introduce you. Emphasis on I. Huh? I see. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Is it just me or has All Might sort of changed his tone a little bit? In previous arcs, for example, the tournament arc, it felt to me like All Might was telling Deku, you need to be the new symbol of peace yesterday. You know what I mean? But here he seems to have somewhat of a more long-term outlook. And I can't help but feel like, well, that could be an accident. It's more satisfying to think that that's development. What I'm about to say is a super, super overreading. It's just what's coming to mind. But like, I think there's definitely something about our own self-expectations and unmet desires for our own lives reflecting in what we want for others and what we push others to do. You know, I think a lot of the time when there's an overwhelming desire for something in one's own life, that creates an anxiety about whether or not it will happen. And that anxiety tends to leak out into relationships with others. You you want other people to like help you know you want other people to accomplish it perhaps it's something like we're trying really hard to have faith that the world can be a certain way or that we can attain certain outcomes and so we want to see it because seeing others do it sort of alleviates some of the pressure of having to forge the way ourselves on our own but i think there's something about having closure for oneself that allows you to take the pressure off and therefore allows you to be more understanding of others and all might in a really big way completed what is perhaps his life's greatest arc you know his hero story his work as the number one symbol of peace 
And I can't help but imagine, even if it's not what the show's going for, that that kind of thing would give him an inner peace. You know, he did it. He did the maximum amount he possibly could have done. He met his full potential. He conquered his challenges. He did tremendous things for the world. And there's a certain point at which you just have to think, that was my role and I did it. And I'm satisfied with my own accomplishments. And the rest you just take on faith. There's a satisfaction in realizing that you don't need the world to be perfect to be satisfied. I think doing your part, even if it's a small part, is often enough. Your actions are are where the, the magic is for you. And so if you've done what you need to do to the fullest capacity that you can do it, I think it can be a little bit easier to let go of the the outcome that you do not affect and to maybe see things more clearly and to be more compassionate for others and to be more open-minded about the way things turn out. So for me, it's kind of refreshing that All Might is thinking about the long-term health of Deku now, it seems, more than he was before. And it makes sense to me why that would happen timing-wise. Third year student Mirio Togata, All Might hey, my boy. with you. Please head to the counseling office at once. Tenseless Mirio. And this is going to enhance Deku's connection with him, I guess? Are you in trouble or something? What, what gives? business could Mirio, all best boy in trouble? No Never. Clue. But I've to gotta go see. I've to Get gotta it? go see. No, I need that explained to me too. <laughs> Man, that was supremely unfunny. <laughs> Funnily enough, the self-deprecating comments at the end of his failed jokes are always the best part. I've been working alongside him for a full year now. Then you're like guaranteed to be his sidekick when you graduate! Well, as long as Sir doesn't change his mind, yeah. That's awesome! Sir, that's Sir. It's all coming together. Why do you need to go through me? I always see him watching old What's video clips of you in his spare time. The history. I'm sure he'd be real happy if you called him up yourself. I can't exactly face him right Ideological. Now because he was dead right. I ended up precisely where he warned me I'd be. Ah, uh, interesting. Why don't you tell me what kind of hero you want to be? What kind? I want to save people with a smile and... Somewhat unconfident sounding here. A new reflection? I want to be strong so I won't worry people. Mmm, wow, that's... I want to wow, always that's... win and save everybody. Nice, that's new influence, right? He's incorporated a lot of different things from different people. That's really cool. The more I experience, the more I see how hard it is to be the kind of hero I want yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. He's updating his, his worldview. And that's right up Mirio's alley too. And he saw it. Mirio sees all in a subtle way. There's no reason for me Pass. to say no though, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he would have said yes no matter what anyway, but he just likes to construct little games and experiments and tasks. There's near constant laughter in the halls whenever he's around. And even if he fails a test, his smile never disappears. Doesn't it sound like he aligns with your philosophies? It's funny that that's how they, that's what they noticed him for before his quirk was that powerful. We've got to catch up to our classmates soon. I told you to shut your damn face! This could be fun to follow. Bakugo and Todoroki, remedial class adventures. He's a hero famous for being demanding on others as well as himself. That's absolutely true. <laughs> Not reassuring at all. You need to do one important thing at this meeting. You gotta make him laugh. Then he'll totally approve of you. That is not Deku. That is just not his... No. He's just beyond this door. Really building up the anticipation stronger, for meeting him. Then walk on through. Open the door yourself. Open the doors you can for now. Due to the massive amount of damage... Can't help but notice the All Might posters. It's safe to presume that some sort of fight went down there. It's most likely the League of Villains, but we're not That's enough. That he is really harsh. You know there's no future for a society without both humor and energy. No! Death to you please. for your bad report. He really opened that door. <laughs> what? What? Oh no, what are, what are they doing in there? This is run. No wonder All Might distanced himself from this guy. Can you imagine the, the PR? I do not want to work here. I do not want to work here. His stare's just as intense in person! The stare is not what bothers me. But from this moment on, I need to open the doors myself. He wants to laugh. Literally and figuratively. I can do that. This is gonna be terrible. In I'm... order to become the number one hero. What the hell is that? I'm Izuku Midoriya. <laughs> Are you ridiculing All Might? He's not funny. <laughs> I could have told you that. Could have saved you the trouble. <laughs> it's Deku. Deku's a lot of things, but funny is not. Not one of his qualities. Although, of course, this is going to be resolved amicably at the start of the next episode because Deku needs to work here. This is sort of a weird introduction for Night Eye. He's sort of intense and kind of strange. That office environment, though, makes me kind of uncomfortable. But this is my Hero Academia, so I know that there's something there. And if I had to guess, I'm going to say it's the fact that he's very intelligent in terms of people smarts, very insightful, and will be very honest. We'll cut right to it because the reason All Might seems to want to avoid him is that he 
saw through All Might to the actual problem and was brave enough, because it's not easy to, you know, speak honestly to like the greatest, most heroic figure in the world about the problems that he saw. So he's definitely going to be a man of principle, and it'll just be interesting to see what those principles are exactly, what they're aligned to, and what Deku can actually take away from it. So as the intro to season four, I gotta say this was a, a weird one, and I think the reason I feel that way is because it feels by far to have the darkest tone out of any of the, the intros to the season so far. The only bright spot is Mirio, which honestly makes me kind of worried about him. Like, the way I feel the season has just started, it's letting you know that this is gonna be a violent one. There haven't been that many deaths at all in the show. Even the villains have, like, gone to jail when defeated, for the most part, right? There were definitely hero deaths in the time of Stain, but I think a lot of it happened sort of off-screen and we heard about it, but this was a pretty visceral start, and to me that's not inconsequential. There are going to be deaths this season, is my feeling. There are going to be heroic deaths this season, which makes me really really worried for people who are just these totally bright spots of light because that seems like a magnet a magnet for disaster and we're gonna get a lot of the villains perspective it seems and there's going to be a villain arc like shigaraki is struggling with this beak guy where is that going it's got to be going towards his development right it's got to be going towards something making him stronger so will the hero development even be able to keep pace with the villain development because it seems like this is gonna be focused on that a lot although who knows i can't be sure. It's just my feeling based on this one episode. So we'll just have to wait and see. But that is the end of season four, episode one and two. I'll see you guys next time when I believe this work study will begin and we find out exactly who this guy is. Mm -hmm.